Hello everyone, it's Tuesday, February 21st. I'm David Song, currency analyst with Daily FX, uh, here to cover the purchasing managers indices uh, for manufacturing, for service-based activity. We also have a composite read as well. Uh, so we'll be looking through no, those numbers in just a little bit. But you know, if you guys are watching what's happening across the market right now, uh, certainly some interesting themes that are going on, I think largely carried over I would even argue uh, early this year, even late last year. So you know, I'll talk about some of those themes and you know, with some of the fresh comments that we got from Fed officials uh, over the holiday weekend, uh, we'll see if this will have a meaningful impact going forward and we do have some more rhetoric to watch on tap tomorrow. Of course, we do have the Fed meeting minutes on tap, uh, but just ahead of then, there is one official that I'll be personally keeping a close eye on. It's Fed Governor Mr. Jerome Powell. Uh, again, he's a permanent voting member on the FOMC. So, you know, we're getting some interesting remarks from former voting members, but these are the rotating members, right? Like Mr. Patrick Harker from Philadelphia. He's not a permanent voting member. You know, so we'll see if, you know, the ones I like to call maybe the majority, the one that are, you know, sort of in a similar position, if you will, like Chair Yellen, who, you know, won't only be, you know, around for 12 months and then they rotate off. But, you know, these permanent voting members, we'll see how they will come out we'll see if they will spark a similar tone uh, but let's not forget later on this afternoon or just right around noon uh, we do have Mr. Patrick Harker back on the wires and you know it's the comments that he laid out during an interview happened overnight I would argue uh, but he argued that he wouldn't take March off the table so in terms of rate hikes right when is the next one he argued that don't discount it just yet again floating this idea that March might be the next one uh, we'll see if we get a little bit more, again, of that tone over the week. But we do have also Mr. John Williams of San Francisco. He's not a voting member this year, so um, speaking of Idaho, not sure if markets are going, to, are going to react to that. But tonight, we also have Mr. Philip Lowe, the central bank head of the Reserve Bank of Australia, also on the wires. We'll see if he'll give us any sort of uh, outlook, if you will. You know, they've been sort of this of stance, this wait-and-see stance. Uh, so we really have not gotten much in terms of, uh, the monetary policy outlook, but some interesting data to watch. The ones I'll be watching personally is the wage cost index. Again, RB has noted that some of the weak inflation largely due to weak wage growth there. So we'll see if that will uh, be key data print to watch for uh, Aussie overnight. But then again, tomorrow, Fed minutes on tap for the afternoon. Second reading for UK GDP, uh, not really expecting a revision with these numbers. So might see a, mid, a limited market reaction if they do come in line. Uh, we get Canada retail sales in the morning, but again, FOMC minutes might be the big one to watch tomorrow. Uh, based on my experience, guys, you know, unless there's something new from the minutes, which is actually rare, we tend to get a limited market reaction with these Fed minutes. I know the headlines make a big deal about it, but remember, we got the interest rate, uh, rate decision already. They give us that uh, sort of uh, less detailed policy statement, right? So this is just going to be a more detailed of, of that, but again, Mr. Powell. He's going to be up just an hour before we get the minute. So, you know, we'll see if that will have a bigger sort of influence, if you will, on price action tomorrow rather than the Fed minutes. That's where I'm sort of leaning. And then we also have some BOE officials tomorrow. Uh, Ms. Shafika speaking, but she will be retiring a little bit early, I believe. When is it April this year, I think? Something like that. Uh, she's going to be, uh, her, again, getting out of the central bank earlier on, uh, later on this year. So we'll see if she will give us anything meaningful as, of course, Mr. Mark Carney. Uh, interesting comments from him, maybe not so interesting, but argued that maybe they could raise rates, cut rates, right? keeping that door open, that monetary policy can respond in either direction. So uh, let's jump into some of the themes that I'm watching today. And, you know, we, we're coming off of a holiday weekend in the U.S., uh, so very interested to see how we're going to get through the week. Uh, but obviously the first sort of picture that we have up here is the DAX. And the reason why I'm watching, we're keeping a close eye on the DAX, is you know, is this a theme that we need to continue to watch this week? I tweeted a chart about this, but uh, right now I think global benchmark equity indices are really highlighting us something. And it, it really shows us a picture, and especially when I look at some of the themes for some of the currency, uh, market dynamics, things of that nature, gives me a little bit of sense of, you know, some of the things I should look for going forward, maybe trade setups, if you will, but watch the DAX here. We'll see if, and just U.S. equities markets have opened just minutes ago, but it looks as though we're trying to follow suit. So, you know, we'll see if the U.S. side can follow what's happening in Europe, maybe press to fresh monthly, fresh 2017 highs, if you will, also on that. We'll see if the Nikkei 225 will largely follow as this one also, 
showing a nice move. We'll see if we could take out those monthly highs going through the last full week of February, right? Maybe an interesting dynamic, but maybe just a matter of time. We've got some nice bullish trigger across the board, I think, for a lot of these benchmark equity indices. So on my end, I'm so favorable. I don't want to fight this. And let me just bring it back to the U.S. market here, guys. Such a big mis misconception. But we have this overbought reading on the RSI. Right? So as long as that holds above 70, I will continue to favor the top side level that I'm personally watching. 2362, just ahead of the U.S. data prints. And again, I think the Fed rhetoric on tap this week may be more favored by markets, may take more of an interest amongst market players here. So, you know, we'll see if this advance will continue. But let's bring it back to some currencies. Uh, I'm keeping a very close eye on the euro this week. Uh, a lot of headlines about the whole Greek deal, what's going to happen with that. We'll continue to watch the elections, the polls uh, for the elections in France, in Germany. Uh, of course, it looks as though Ms. Pen, Ms. Le Pen, leading the polls at the moment right now, so we'll see how that will all fare. But, you know, I really like what's happening with price right now with the euro dollar. I think I'm getting this clarity. You know, we got this signal last week where we broke that bearish formation early on in the month, got a bit of a gut check of former trend line support now acting as resistance, I think. And this is where I feel a little bit more comfortable maybe taking some new sort of trend lines, if you will, help me sort of guide me over the near term. So, you know, maybe we have sort of a new trajectory here, but I do like the break. The bit of gut check we got last week Gives me a little bit more conviction, again, that this was a meaningful break of this near-term pattern. The recovery that we had, again, from end of December, if you will, end of 2016. Maybe it's all done and over. Maybe we'll continue to the downside. Is this a lower high in the longer-term context? And can we revisit some of the lows that we were looking at the end of last year? So I do like the downside. Um, waiting to see whether or not we can get some fresh monthly lows once we get through some of the U.S event risk on tap for this week. Uh, a lot of good mornings here. Let me get. Let me not forget about these uh, questions and comments. And again, guys, as always, feel free to throw out your questions as we go through these events, if you will. Uh, and I'll definitely spend a lot more uh, time talking about these themes. I might not be able to get to everyone's questions and things I want to cover today, but try to go through them uh, as quickly as possible. And also, Chris over here saying, good morning, David. Same to you, my friend. Hope all is well. So you're a dollar. Again, we'll see if we can take out some of the monthly lows. We'll see if we can continue to give back the advance that we had from earlier this year. Um, and let's bring it back to Chris who's asking a question. Says, so if we get some, you know, dovish rhetoric from the Fed minutes, maybe from officials, uh, will this oil strength, um, will the bounce in oil cap some of the strength in dollar CAD? Can we get a, uh, maybe a little bit more of a meaningful pullback in the exchange rate there? So. You're bringing up a very good question here, Chris, and um, there was a lot of headlines about, you know, oil-related sectors, Saudis pushing that sort of new fund, right? They're going to see if which exchange is better for them. Uh, there's this whole headline that Saudi's going to make the switch to renewable energy now in their own economy. Um, nice pop in oil. Brent, also, there's a new, oh, I forget the name of it, I believe it's the Norway uh, production. They're going to add that to the Brent benchmark now. So there's going to be a little bit of a mix-up. I know CME is working on how to adjust those numbers going forward in those contracts, but there was a lot of headlines for oil over the weekend. You know, whether you want to argue this or that is, you know, really impacting oil. The only thing I want to say here, Chris, is we're back at it again. We sort of gapped here, you know, following the holiday weekend, uh, but we're back at 55. And just remember what happened last time, right? We tagged that level, came crashing down, and we closed all the way down here. And, you know, we're seeing this broad-based dollar strength today, and you mentioned that, you know, maybe it's off of the Fed rhetoric, what have you. Um, but right now, not sure if I want to fight this dynamic, right? I am pretty constructive. OPEC has, has been making this meaningful push um, to really adjust, right, supply and demand there. So I'm, I'm going to wait here, Chris. Uh, we're coming up against trendline resistance on the RSI. So this has been, you know, what I've been talking about, this sort of complex, very long dating, wedge triangle formation that I've been talking about, wedging, whatever, you know, but I think we got that nice move. So I'm pretty constructive still. I just need this break for a little bit more conviction that, you know what, the recovery that we had since pretty much last year has some more legs. It's not done yet. And, you know, every time we get these range bound conditions, it's more of a, you know, consolidation, if you will, coiling effect before we get a topside move, right? But this is the one thing I'll talk about as we're talking about fundamentals. Uh, my only concern about oil right now is a lot of these major central banks have been arguing that this recovery in energy prices has been driving inflation, and that's where they, again, an argument I could see they're going to look through this, right, this transitory effect, right, that we heard on the way down, right, they were talking about how this is all transitory, so they'll wait for the rebalancing. Will the opposite come back, right, of that now that, again, we're seeing higher energy prices, 
will this be something that maybe central banks will turn or take with a grain of salt? Let me see it that way, Chris, as it is normalizing. But again, if this dynamic continues, we'll see if that will continue to limit some of the topside risk for dollar cat as well. We'll see if the Bank of Canada, you know, may take on more of a hawkish tone, if you will. They've been largely holding that policy throughout last year, right? They haven't changed and or really done anything. So for now, though, I have to give it to price action, right? I don't want to fight some of the bigger themes. So uh, right now, I think, again, we're coming off of support. We broke the tight range from last week. We'll see if we could revisit the monthly opening range here, right? 132 handle, 132.10, if you will. That's going to be my line in the sand. But again, long term, I'm bullish, but near term, I'm flat, my friend. So again, very nice range play, I think. Again, trending long term, but near term, you know, there are some favorable levels to play. And again, looking at that RSI, I really don't have a direction, just consolidation that we might get this sort of coiling action, maybe before we get a move higher. But, you know, Mr. Butchers and I, you know, he, he loves the trend lines. He loves the slopes of these. And that's the only thing I would mention, Chris, is watch the slopes. This slope, again, I have a broader trend line going all the way back to 2012. We've talked about this numerous times, right? But I think I have to, again, respect the fact that we're coming off of that. We're breaking the narrow range here. Maybe if we could break this bearish RSI formation, gives me a little bit more conviction to the top side. But yeah, I'll be careful with this one. Uh, very nice range play here. So again, for now, I'm going to tame my expectations as well. Just look for maybe a run towards the monthly highs. But once we get there, we'll see if we get a nice trigger on the RSI, right? But just be careful with commodities right now because it's a little bit mixed. Like copper, I mean, are we coiling, right? We, we broke those highs earlier in the month. Pull, pulling back right now, just really just a limited pullback here. And if you take some tighter trend lines, if you will, it's holding off fairly nicely, right? So even with this one, I don't want to get too bearish on this, right? And even gold and oil, I think they're just sitting at resistance right now. We'll take a quick look before we move on. Remember, 1249 is what I have. 1250 is what a lot of my colleagues are looking at. But look at that struggle, right? Maybe near-term exhaustion, right? Start of a bearish formation here, so we'll see if we get a larger pullback for this one as well. But even with silver, um, that 18 region, right? Oops. 18, 18.25, just really struggling there right now. And the reason why I really just wanted to wrap up this whole commodity overview with silver is I am sort of getting a break now, guys. So just, this is the one thing I'll leave off with. We'll, we'll talk about more about this maybe tomorrow, but um, 18 to 18.25, right? This former sort of support zone I was watching struggled there longer term trend line resistance maybe coming into play rsi struggled to break above 70 even though we were making fresh monthly highs last week fresh 2017 highs last week now i'm starting to see this trend really start to struggle right pointing at exhaustion um, maybe an extension of this long-term trend we'll see so i'm waiting for a little bit more clarity with commodity prices as again some mixed price action right now but um oil Again, I think it might be a little bit more of a different dynamic. A lot of headlines going on with that and, you know, this meaningful push. So we'll see if that rebalancing will, you know, large continue. And Chris, I was also reading the story. You might want to do a quick search. It was about, take it for a water twist. It was a big story about uh, how Royal Dutch Shell was actively purchasing um, real oil, um, just barrels and barrels of oil, these tankers that are just floating around. They were just purchasing all of them in the real market. And, and you know, a lot of these oils companies actually have these big trading desks too, and how they were actively, again, involved in the market here. Um, so there's a lot of headlines right now, Chris. So that was another headline that I read again that, again, maybe you want to do a quick search on Google News or something, where Dutch Shell was actively buying contracts um, in the market, participating in, again, maybe spurring this move, right? So a lot of themes going on about oil. So I'll continue to watch those headlines. We'll see if we get another squeeze higher, right? All right, Chris, what a big thanks there. My pleasure, my friend. So let's move back to some of these U.S. dollar crosses. And uh, to be quite honest, I just, for argument's sake, let's just cover cable. Even though we have BOE on tap, watch the tight range here, guys. We're quickly winding down to March. You know, a lot of back and forth about how will this whole voting process, um, you know, with Parliament's involvement on the U.K. referendum, how will that all pan out, right? Um, so it's going to really get tight over the next couple of days, I think, for cable, for sterling crosses. So... I'm personally, again, not a recommendation from Daily FX, just my personal views, but I am not touching anything sterling. My personal game plan, I mean, a nice tight range here, so if you guys are gutsy, right, feel free to play the tight range here. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, but again, when we get these squeezes, could mean that 
could be coming up time for a big move. And again, with these headlines coming out about Brexit, we'll continue to watch that. But uh, the pair that I do like watching right now, and again, given the pickup that we're seeing in risk appetite, watch some of these end crosses. Uh, I think that's where most of my focus will lie for the week. Nice. Uh, again, I just want to float this idea. I do this all the time at the top-down approach. So you can't really see it on the on the daily, but I'll argue this on the hourly, and I'm sure we'll get some more of these. But is this sort of an inverse head and shoulders here happening on the hourly? Um, I have to get rid of some of my trend lines here, but a um, bit of divergence down here, right? Let me just point to the big one. So even though we got that big low, right, at earlier this month, RSI has not really shown that, and I think we're getting that sort of conviction after the play last week. So again, I'm waiting for a little bit more conviction about, you know, we're seeing that we're seeing that push in the DAX. We'll see if the Nikkei will follow. I'll see if S&P will again press the fresh 2017 highs, and all with that, we'll see if it will carry dollar yen a little bit higher. Right, over the coming days. So this is another one I, I, I sort of like watching right now. And uh, we'll see if we can take out, again, the monthly range. 50-day moving average has largely kept us capped for most of, pretty much through all uh, February, I would say, since most, or since end of January as well. So watch that 50-day moving average. But bigger picture, I personally think this is a bull flag. I got a nice bullish trigger on the RSI. So I am pretty constructive about dollar yen. And the pair that I really like watching, I know we got the data, guys. Let me quickly run through the data here. All right. Where is my screens? Give me one second, guys. All right. A little bit of a delay on my end, guys. All right, 54.3 for manufacturing. Again, U.S. manufacturing. PMI figure. 53, uh, 54, excuse me, 54.3, and then 53.9 for service-based activity. So weaker than expected. We we're looking for a small pickup in both of those figures. But again, 54.3 for manufacturing PMI, and then 53.9 for the services. So a bit weaker than expected for both services, uh, service-based activity, as well as for manufacturing activity as well. So some dollar weakness right now. Dollar and just edging lower. Let's take a quick look at Euro. Same story there. Maybe just a quick blip on the radar, but again, both figures missing market expectations. Uh, we were getting some comments from Mr. Neil Kashkari. Again, he's also a voting member this year, right? The Minneapolis Fed president, but um, I can't see any meaningful headlines. I'll just read some of them, but again, Mr. Kashkari was saying monitoring stock market um, has in factored in potential fiscal policy changes into his outlook. Again, just noting about some of the uncertainty that lies ahead right now, but nothing meaningful from uh, Mr. Neil Kashkari. Uh, again, I don't think this market reaction will last. My personal expectations, guys. Again, I think we have some bigger fish to fry this week, right? With uh, minutes tomorrow, um, I want to see what Mr. Jerome Powell is going to say tomorrow as well. But uh, we'll see if Euro will hold again the monthly low. Just pips away from that, uh, but for now I think we got a nice turn in the euro as well. Bearish trigger, right? Talking about that earlier. And uh, Verula wants me to cover the U.S. dollar index. Which one? The ICE one or this one? I don't watch this one too much, but one thing I will say about this dollar index, uh, maybe just a failed move at former resistance. Uh, I was personally watching this level. This is just the 618 of this retrace. This is from all the way back in April of last year into the high that we made of um, pretty much at the end of last year or beginning of this year, I would argue. You can take either high. I don't think it really makes a difference, but I took the January high. Um, again, failed run at that 618 retrace. We're getting a nice move here. I mean, the RSI hasn't really told me or hasn't really shown a meaningful conviction because the trend line on this one was very, or the, the slope was very steep on this one, so I didn't expect it to last very long, but no, it's working out pretty nicely. Here is a trend line I'll start potentially watching for the RSI maybe, because we failed to preserve this one, and that's why I thought we could get a bigger correction, but the only reason why I want to sort of bring up this old trend line is this. I, mean, I thought maybe we can see something similar here, where a former trend line support turns into resistance, but if it's cracking again, and we're seeing momentum trade back above that former trend line, you know, I'm also watching to see that, right? Might remove this risk that, you know, we're going to see former trend line resist, uh, support, excuse me, on the RSI act as resistance, and maybe keep the dollar strength store sort of tamed here, spur range-bound conditions. But, you know, I'm watching this move to see if that's going to 
really give me a little bit more conviction to the top side for the dollar index. So I can't say I watch this too much. Again, I can trade it here in the U.S. Right? But it's somewhat constructive here. And you know, I think it's going to be all about picking the good counterparts. Because like, remember, the breakdown of this is it's equally weighted between Euro, Sterling, Aussie, and Yen. Right? So Sterling, I'm not expecting that thing to move. So let's negate that out. Euro, Dollar, yeah, we might see, again, some of that Euro weakness really translate into this. Same thing for the Yen here. But... Nice segue into the Aussie, right? It's holding a very tight range right now. So, you know, with this one, I want to see what uh, Mr. Lowe is going to say this evening. And to be quite honest, guys, this one exceeded some of my expectations here. Um, I was watching that 77.30, 60 zone for quite some time now. It's ever since the start of the month, right? We got that nice bull flag panning out. And to be quite honest, when mo momentum was deviating from price, I didn't think we're gonna, we were going to get that sort of last pop. So I'll have to readjust some of my trend lines here, but no, we got that kick high into resistance, I think. Right. Now we're starting to see that more of a bearish formation on the RSI, and remember, it did sort of tag over bought, but never really made that convincing move higher, even though we were seeing fresh 2017 highs in the exchange rate. So, you know, this was the theme last week, right? Exhaustion, signs of that, especially for a lot of, a lot of these commodity block currencies. We talked about dollar cat, we talked about Aussie dollar, less than but not least Kiwi dollar here. Right, we're making fresh monthly low, guys. I do like this move here. Maybe this is leading the pact. Right? It's the way I'm sort of looking at it, especially following the failed move at 73.30, 73.50. Right? Nice push higher here. Made fresh yearly highs, but look at how ugly that candle was. Right? Made fresh yearly highs that day, monthly highs, but closed in the red. Ever since then, we got that big sell-off, broke support levels, near-term support levels. We're coming up against one right now, 71 handle, 71.20. If that gives out, 7040, 7060, that's what I have next. So this is the one that I'm watching a little bit more. Uh, I think it's can maybe leading its commodity block currency counterparts. Um, but this one has a nice move going on as well, right? We got that bearish trigger earlier. Right. Really feel to retain that move. And I've been waiting, right? We've been getting these sort of gut check moves ever since we've been testing that 7330, 7350 zone here. But again, I do like watching Kiwi dollar a little bit more. And again, with Aussie dollar, we'll see if Governor uh, Lowe will come out, maybe fuel some of the weakness here. Remember, they have been arguing or retaining that currency intervention for a very long time. Right? RBA, RBNZ, same story. They want that depreciation in the exchange rate to help with these, uh, to help with the inflation outlook. Right. So I'll watch for that. And, and Chris, you know, I hope that helps, right? Because we talked about dollar CAD, but you see how all these things are, are themes are lining up right now, right? The commodity block currencies are a bit weak. Copper, I know it's showing some strength over the last few days, but again, maybe a bit of exhaustion here. And gold and silver, right? They're coming off of key resistance zones right now. So does that all line up where maybe commodity block currencies might be on the weaker ones, right? But to you know, shift back my focus here, I'll just cover this before we get out of here, guys. And again, I'll be back tomorrow to do you know cover more of these. And I'm again, we need to see whether this bounce in risk app in risk appetite again beyond Fed rhetoric, you know, all these expectations. Is this the big theme we need to watch this week, right? Uh, Aussie Yen, right? If this pickup in risk is for real, I like watching Aussie Yen, right? Uh, nice move here. I got the bullish trigger, remember, early on in the month. So I've been waiting um, to see if we get some better prices, to be quite honest, and it's just not pulling back. So we're doing a pretty good job here, I think, of holding above, again, 86 largely. I was watching this last hurdle at 86.10, right? But a nice move. We'll see if we, you know, we're back to the races on this one again, if we do see a pickup in, in market sentiment, risk appetite. Um, but right now, near-term hurdle, 88.16 to be exact. And again, 2017 highs, monthly highs, if you will. Um, but if we continue on with this pattern, and remember, I think this was more of a triangle than anything else. Right? If this is just the mere continuation of whoops, you know, some of these near-term patterns. Right? We'll continue to watch some of the topside targets. We'll see if some of the momentum here will gather pace, right? But very nice move, I think. Right. So these are some of the pairs that I'm much... Oh, one last theme I almost forgot. Uh, keep a close eye on the peso and the rand, right? Uh, remember, I like to watch these two as maybe a gauge for risk appetite, but you know, I think I'm getting a little bit more color where you know, in the currency spectrum or USD crosses, let me say it that way, right? Uh, I think we've got to be mindful of the dollar story, right? Um, dollar peso holding that key support level, right? This is my sort of favorite EM to watch, maybe next to Korean one, but a nice support run, right? Failed. We'll see if we get a little bit more of meaningful recovery over the days, at, uh, over the days ahead. Again, I think we're trying to break out of this formation here, right? So some 
nice developments there. And even with the RAND, you know, we got that big break of, of a key support zone last week. Talked in the roundtable, but uh, we'll see if we get a move back above. Again, this 13, 1350 area, right, where we struggled for months and months. And then finally we got it last week. Talked about it in the roundtable as well. And now we've been struggling, again, try to close back above that level. We poked back above that level a few times last week, but just really failing to close it. Is that going to be another one to watch? But, you know, the way I'm looking at this South Africa rent is it maybe more related to risk, dollar pay, so maybe more so with the dollar story. Again, given what's going to happen with the fiscal changes coming about in the U.S., right? So a lot of things to watch. And um, Chris noting here, DXY still for me, head and shoulders. I'm just wary of these head and shoulders call, right? The only reason why I, I would be wary of that, Chris, is because of this. If we re if we held this formation, I would love to see that head and shoulders, right? But the fact that our side does not jive, right, with things that would hold what a head and shoulders, right? That's what negates at least the risk for now for me, right? This move, right? And that's where I'm going to see if this is going to continue because, and before I forget again, let me just share this with you guys. And I hope all you guys have this page handy. You know, every time I hear headlines about, and I'll share this with the rest of the group, guys, if you guys missed it, um, I'm sending it out in the question box. But, you know, every time I hear these headlines about, oh, Fed said this and, and market expectations are moving. Well, really? And you know what? I'll refresh the page just for you guys right now. And I really like this page because, again, it updates very frequently. You get the timestamp so you know exactly what time it's updated. But really, for March, despite the comments from Harker, 78 probability that Fed will hold next month still, right? So has it really shifted? You know what? Let's go out to June. 28%, pro 29, let's call it, 29% probability that they'll hold. And again, 71% probably that they'll raise. So has market expectations really shifted over the weekend? And because of these, you know, minor headlines from these voting officials, I don't buy that argument right now. Again, maybe speculation is growing for that. So we'll see what the minutes will lay out. We'll see what Governor Powell will say, right? A permanent voting member, if he comes out and, and he sort of agrees with the sent, uh, sentiment, that's when I'll look at this number. We'll see if we get a little bit more of a, of a dynamic change. So I will argue small changes, yes. Has it shifted though? Bigger picture? Not for me, right? So theme to watch there, guys. And again, I hope everyone keeps this link very handy. And I'm glad the CME put this together for us, uh, for everybody. Um, last but not least, for all of wants to go through silver real quickly. Yes, just last look at silver. Just watch the 18 to 1825 zone, right? And the only reason why I'm very cautious on that move for silver, remember I was very constructive on this move is because of that RSI. It's just not following along. Is it breaking down from this pattern here, right? The bullish formation that I have, uh, again, just from late last year, right? So the, again, same time as that ra rally that we got, but is it really getting exhausted right now, right? And the reason why I like watching this level is because it was, you know, sort of a key pivot zone, former support zone area that came into play last year, right? And also, trendline resistance is right there as well, and this is the one carried over from last year, right? So a very crucial zone that we're in right now. Is it stalling? Does it suggest that the longer term trend here, if you will, from 2016 will maybe carry over? Starting to think that, and I'll get a little bit more conviction, I think, if this pattern breaks down. Right? So to the downside, uh, feel free, again, if you're a little bit of a shorter term trader than I am, and, and again, if we do get a little bit more encouraging signs that, again, our RSI has deviated from price, it's going to break down from this feel free to start tagging on some new short-term retracements, right? So the first level of interest, again, I I've done this already, but I haven't left it on my charts. So let me just change the color so we can see it a little bit more cleanly, but that's why I know these levels are gonna are looking kind of kind of nice already. So 1760 uh, zone will be my first level to watch, the downside, if again, this RSI bearish triggers the real deal here. Um, Near-term support maybe, right? Nice move there. Uh, 786 retrace. Usually like watching that 786 and then 618 retrace all the way down here, 1715. Um, but it's going to be that 1730, 40 zone. Right? More of a bigger pivot, I think, for silver prices. That's going to be some of the bigger levels I'm watching through the downside. And again, um, I'll watch those, maybe be a little bit more favorable about weaker silver prices if that RSI trigger really starts to unfold over the coming days. Right? Hope that helps. And with that, guys, uh, Looks as though I just ran out of time here. Hope you guys enjoyed the overview. And again, um, 
let's bring it back to currencies here and got that quick blip on the dollar but again we'll see if this will just be something uh, maybe a bump on the road here as again this sort of expectations about the Fed uh, might be a key theme for the week with all the Fed rhetoric the minutes on tap tomorrow so we'll see how markets will do and again I'll be on the wires I'll be back here just before that so we'll talk about how conditions are before then and then again watch that pick up in risk appetite ah, man that the DAX is just it's going right so we'll see if this pickup in risk appetite will continue and you know personally on my end Nikkei is is my sort of favorite here to watch we'll see if its other counterparts will largely reflect that and you know even for the Nikkei similar to the dollar yen I think this is a bull flag so we'll, we'll see if we could revisit some of the highs we'll see if we could finally get this closing price above 19 at 636 to be exact on my end right that's that we poked, above, we poked above that level many times in December, but just really failed to close above that. That's what sparked that pullback that we've got. Are we going to make a little bit more of a meaningful run there this week? All right, guys. So with that, hope to see you all again tomorrow. Again, I'll dig some more into you know, the themes, currency pairs that I like watching over the course of the week, last full week of February. But with that, best of luck on everyone's trades. Have a great day, everyone. And again, I hope to see everyone for tomorrow's coverage just ahead of the Fed Minutes.